everybody, Pete Werner here at the Carnation Cafe on Main Street in Disneyland with this week's Disney Dining Show. I'm going to be joined by a couple of folks that don't normally appear on the Dining Show with us. Miss Mary Jo Willey, Miss Nancy Johnson, and Miss Corey Fiascano. Um, so, uh, looking forward to it. Uh, let's see how the meal is. We're here for dinner. It's an early dinner. And uh, we're getting all the popular staples as Craig goes in and out with the cameras, freaking me out. So uh, let's check it out. What are you eating, Nancy? These are the famous, excuse me, the famous fried dill pickles of the Carnation Cafe. Comes five to a basket. Nice, big, very cute presentation. And oh my god, the flavor on these. They wedge cut them as opposed to narrow cutting them like most places do their fried pickles. Yeah, not chips. They're not chips. They're definitely here. Nice big hunk of pickle. Not too juicy, but don't eat them the minute they set them on the table or you will burn them inside of your mouth. Flavor spot on, not too dilly, not too sour. Served with a little remoulade dipping sauce. I'm not going to double dip for you, because um, that's rude. It is. But crunchy, the pickles are still crunchy, despite being fried. And so is the coating. The coating is the right amount of done, not too greasy. Corey, do you agree? Fried pickles are kind of my thing. I get them every opportunity I... Oh, it's very hot though. <laughs> Cold, yeah. Let me swallow this real quick. They're kind of my thing. Uh, I get them every opportunity that I have. The restaurant serves fried pickles, I'm getting them. And these are fantastic fried pickles. Like she was just saying, uh, they come out kind of hot and they are the spears, not the chips. So immediately if you bite into it as soon as it hit, hit the table, you're gonna get a little bit of burn in your mouth. But these are Parmesan crusted, which I don't need to know that. You don't even taste the Parmesan. But uh, panko fried golden brown served with the house sauce. And what do you say the house sauce was? It's kind of like a remoulade, kind of like not quite a Thousand Island, but not. It's sort of a cross between ranch and Thousand Island, wouldn't you say? I don't have a lot of experience eating ranch or Thousand Island. Um, I, the sauce is all right. I don't care for it one way or another. It tastes good, uh, but the fried pickles are amazing. Do you guys agree? No. Um, so, uh, uh, crunchy in spite of being fried, uh, I agree, uh, much like myself, crunchy in spite of being fried. Uh, but uh, I, I, I don't think I have, this has no appeal for me at all. I don't think this is good. Um, the romalade is basically a Thousand Island uh, dressing with some vinegar added, so it has a bitterness and it burns the back of your throat. If you just take a little taste of it, that's not appealing to me. Um, I'm not a pickle guy though, so if you're a pickle guy, I'll let you do with that what you want. I'm, I mean, I am a pickle guy, but not a pickle guy. Um, family restaurant. So, not a family podcast. Um, <laughs> I uh, so uh, so these don't really these don't really appeal to me. What about your salad though? Uh, my salad is. Don't Fine. say pedestrian. It is, pedestrian is the only word to use because it is, uh, they put some very fresh lettuce on a plate and brought it to my table. There are no effort whatsoever in this made to do anything even remotely inventive or ingenious uh, with this. So, but it's fine. Okay. Fine. Fair enough, Mary Jo Pickles, go. I enjoy the pickles. I had never had fried pickles before and the first time I came out to Carnation Cafe and I ate them, it opened up a whole new world for me. The remoulade tastes more like kind of mayonnaise-y to me. Standing on a stool opens to, up a whole new world. Holy cow. Oh, I'm 
it's all right. Just kind of spread pickle. No, but actually, it's delicious. I agree with the spears being crunchy. Um, and it's got the perfect type of coating on it also. So I did bite into it when I first got it, so I did burn the top of my mouth, but it didn't stop me. I just kept eating the pickle. That's, to me, that's how good they are. So I liked it. I'm gonna have another one. <laughs> How's it tasting, Pete? You're not, gonna, you're not gonna like my answer. What did you get? I got the chicken right. fried chicken. I think it's fine. This is a buttermilk fried chicken breast served with mashed potatoes, country gravy, and seasoned yeah. vegetables for $19. I was Pedestrian. There's nothing exceptional about this fried chicken. I've had better, much better. Um, I mean, it's not terrible. I mean, the chicken is well cooked, it's moist. Um, it just doesn't. It's not hitting the spot. It's not. It's not now. I took a bite of uh, Mary Jo's meatloaf on the other hand. And that was exceptional. That was exceptional, as was the chili that was being passed around that Craig had, I think Craig had chewed and spit back he into the did, bowl. Right? Poured in. Poured in. Um, so, um, you know, again, you've heard us talk on the show about Publix fried chicken. That's the epitome of fried chicken, um, and this is not even this is not even playing the same game. I'm sorry. I know Mary Jo's sitting here like. Now I want to try to stab the me. I, well, now I want to try the chicken that you do like because I think this is delicious. Oh. <laughs> no, I really do so like sad. The, the, I think the chicken fried chicken. I've had it a few times here, and I think it's really good. No, and I like it's it. It's not bad. It's not that it's bad. Okay. It's just not special at all. I mean, there's nothing. I could get this at a roadside diner anywhere. This is not special. They pounded down a breast. They did a buttermilk, uh, a, a buttermilk crust. It's not particularly well seasoned. But did you Mashed try it with the gravy? Yes, it? yes, of course. Okay. And you know, the mashed potatoes are okay. Um, the the vegetables are, are fresh, roasted vegetables, so that was nice cauliflower and broccoli is what's on the plate right now. Um, but $19, no, it's just not exceptional, I'm sorry. Well, what about your meatloaf, Mary Jo? My meatloaf is delicious, and I don't know how much it costs if you want to look at the menu and see how much it is. Well, why don't you take the okay. menu? Thank you, sir. So I have- as tall as you are. He's so bad. So I had the homemade meatloaf, which is Beef and pork blended together, served with a ketchup glaze, mashed potatoes, mushroom gravy, and seasonable vegetables. Seasonal vegetables. And the ketchup glaze isn't too ketchupy, which I thought was really good. Thank you. The meatloaf itself was just the perfect is there, is there blend of, I hate to say moist, it's just very juicy and, and just really good and seasoned. It's not too salty and it's not bland at all. And I really liked it with the mashed potatoes. I find it interesting that Pete and I, we had two different entrees, but we have the same vegetables. So there's, to me, that's just, seems like there's not much of a variety of the vegetables that they serve us. Flavors but fine. the plate itself is delicious. Well, if you don't take a bite, I'm not gonna believe that you well, eat it. Oh my gosh, this is so, you have to look at this, it's just so good, right? That was delicious. No question, That that really, that's the thing, that meatloaf is the thing to get when you come here. And I don't even think it needs the glaze because the seasoning that they Agreed. have in the meat, yeah. right, is just the glaze, really, The glaze really is good. an addendum. Yeah, um, just that little and, extra. And the, 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 I mean, it's a, a huge piece of meatloaf too. Yeah. This is a great portion size, and how much was it? I didn't look at the price, sorry about that. It's below. Of course not, dear, you're not paying. $16. So you, for $16, you're getting, I think, with that versus $19 for this, you're getting a larger portion yeah. of your main piece. That piece of meatloaf was okay. bigger than this chicken well, breast. And, I have, and yours was full of, it was breaded. And this is pure protein with the with the mashed potatoes. And so yeah, I do have to So I, I think this is a much, much better deal. Plus it's much, much better Good. food. So. Well, what do you get, Fiasco? So I got the panay pasta with shrimp. It was 21 bucks. And the first thing I want to mention is when it came out, it was sprinkled with cheese. 
Now I get over I get over it and I eat it like I know that the crust on those fried pickles are made with Parmesan. I don't care, I love them. But if it's gonna have a big coating of cheese on the top, I wanted to say it, it didn't. That kind of bummed me up, but I got over it. Uh, with that being said, the shrimp was really good. Uh, it was tender, sometimes when you get shrimp, that's a little too hard. This, no problem with that at all, and the shrimp honestly did have some good flavor to it. Now, besides the shrimp having some good flavor, yeah, the pasta, shrimp I, four shrimp. I was, I was trying to count them while Yeah, we were... four little tails. But with that being said, uh, the shrimp had some good flavor, the pasta didn't really have any good flavor. Um, the sauce was, was weak, it was boring. And I've had, and I know like a lot, like garlic cream sauces don't always have a, like a really strong, uh, powerful flavor, but I've had good garlic cream sauces before at Italian restaurants and things like that. This, um, I know this isn't an Italian restaurant, but um, this cream sauce was very poor. My comment to him was that, uh, was my comment to him was that this was uh, something that tasted like what I make at home. So it tastes like the light cream sauce I prefer to cook with like skim milk kind of flavor. Well, how was yours, Nancy? You had the uh, what? Okay, I had the catch of the day, which this time it's salmon, and it came with um, bulgur wheat and lots of broccoli. Throw that bulgur wheat in your mouth. Okay. No, that's vile weed. If you're doing the if you're doing the uh, the piece what? from Seinfeld. No. The broccoli. No. You're calling it bulgur wheat. No, no, no. Bulgur wheat. Oh, I thought you were saying bulgur weed. <laughs> talking about no, the here. broccoli. I'm like, no, it's vile weed. Craig, here, give him a look at the bulgur. It's just plain old ordinary cooked bulgur. It's probably cooked in a broth. No! It's bulgur weed. It's like in wheat peel off. It's, like, it's like a Jimmy Buffett song. So is it like Whatever. Rice? Oh, yeah. Okay, so now that we got the whole bugger weed issue out of the table, um, I was really hoping that this was a roasted red pepper sauce for my salmon. It turns out that it's tomato based. Um, the salmon can be eaten pretty well with or without. I actually preferred it without. Gonna give you a taste of it with here. It doesn't add much. It's a nice flavor, but it tastes kind of like a canned pasta sauce or a homemade pasta sauce. Now the salmon, perfectly cooked. Crunchy around the edges. One of the things I especially liked, you know how most of the time when you get cooked salmon, it, that it, the skin isn't really very edible? and it kind of a little slimy. This is super crispy on the bottom, so you can actually eat your whole piece of salmon all the way through to the skin. Flavor's spot on. It was $21.99, or $21. I'm not entirely sure it's worth that extra price. I personally would probably go for the meatloaf versus what I got here, but if you don't eat meat, you eat fish, great choice. <laughs> dessert time? Oh, it's dessert time. Ooh, yeah. I don't understand this. Well, it's, um, it's a banana split, but they call it a yeah. banana sundae. But it's got hot fudge on the bottom, yeah. bananas, and vanilla ice cream. It's Do you know where the banana split was invented? No. Latrobe, Pennsylvania. Wow. Unlike the Great Dorito. Great story. I like knowing the backstory. They're gonna tell that to their grandkids. Well, it's something we're proud about in my college town. Oops, sorry. All right. All right. Um, where's the where's the float? Come here. I want to taste the float. I love Does your anyone products. have any thoughts? Not uh, yet. I gotta finish trying this stuff. It's definitely a hot fudge sundae with banana in it. I ain't getting hot fudge. It, oh, how much with it's sprinkles. The where's the menu? I got banana. Got lots of banana. It tastes like a basic hot fudge sundae with bananas. The table. Um, yeah. I think it was seven fifty. We also tried the malt uh, chocolate, right, and the vanilla shakes. Uh, 
the cold chocolate malt. The malt, the chocolate. Oh. Okay, chocolate. hold on. Chocolate malt, vanilla shake, root beer float with vanilla ice cream, and the banana sundae. The banana fudge sundae, right? Banana something fudge like sundae or something like that. And the, the, the tagline for this restaurant really is Carnation Cafe. We're good, just not exceptional. And these desserts kind of follow in that soup. Nothing exceptional here. These are average. I will say I, the root beer float is the best thing here. Chocolate malt is good. Vanilla shake is good. Whatever they're doing with this banana thing, it's okay, it's good. Um, but nothing exceptional. There's no part of this experience that I was like, wow, you know, this is, this is Disneyland. No, this is... Den this is Denny's. I was literally just thinking that. I was gonna. Th I was thinking like this is something that I would expect to get at Denny's. Literally Denny's. I was thinking the exact same thing. And I'm not saying that Denny's is bad because I like going to Denny's, but that's exactly what I was thinking. The word I would use is it's kind of basic. It's kind of basic stuff. And I realize Disneyland fans are probably gonna like hate on us for saying this, but you know the truth hurts. I mean, I'm sorry. This is not exceptional. You have exceptional places here. Okay. Many of them, but like this isn't one of them. I have a perspective. This is supposed to be um, a turn of the century, comfort food kind of restaurant. So that's why you've got your meatloaf, you've got stuff that, you know, like chili, you know, basic, basic kind of things. They occasionally do have some really good desserts in seasonal, special event kind of things. Today, it just isn't a time for that stuff. But if you have picky eaters who won't eat more than certain types of things, this is where you're gonna find that comforty, very basic food kind of place. There's nothing scary here. There's nothing really different here. You know, you may have that person that just wants that milkshake or just wants this. Now, frankly, I thought the, cho the chocolate I've never, I've never been a fan of catering to the lowest common denominator. I, I, I think it's okay to have some of those items on a menu. Yeah. But when it's the entire menu right. um, is, is reaching for mediocrity, it's... it's this is the, the meatloaf was really good. Yeah. Um, the meatloaf was really good. I, I would say that to me, this is more like a, like a quick service, sit down restaurant. The, I mean, the, the type of food that they hear, have here is food that you don't have to wait for them, wait a long time we, for them to bring out. I don't want to forget. We have to give a shout out to uh, Lupita. Yeah, Lupita from Long Beach. Our, our server, um, yeah. who's phenomenal. I mean, yeah. she's phenomenal. So I want to make sure that I say the service has been superb. Yeah. And it's not that the food is bad. I don't want anybody to think it's, this is not Tony's Town Square. Let me be really upfront about that. So it's just boy. not. It's not some like, oh my god, I gotta go out of my way to come back here again. I don't. I don't. A lot of people do like Carnation Cafe, and I do like it. And, and like Nancy was saying, that it's more of the more um, comfort home cooked food. But the desserts, it was all ice cream, ice cream based. There was there was no cake, no. No puddings and yeah, they used to, but um, and I like ice cream, but I kind of like having a variety or, or the ability to choose something else other than ice cream. So that surprised me. That's why I'm saying this is more like quick service um, restaurant that you can make reservations, right? Yeah. So like on the menu for dessert, it was literally four different kinds of milkshakes. Uh, you could get an ice cream soda float, and then two types of sundaes. Those are your options. I think it'd be cool if like maybe they just like, and like the two Sundays were like very much ice cream Sundays, like ice cream, whipped cream, hot fudge, and then one of them had a banana and one of them didn't have a banana. Like maybe a brownie Sunday would have been cooler. Right. Maybe a, a yeah. cookie with ice cream on top would have been cooler, but yeah. The base, base, the word I would use is basic. For this sure. is this is a restaurant that is designed to move people in and out. Yes. So the pacing on the meal was very. Uh, I'm not going to say it was uh, rushed, but it was tight. So like you've just finished your appetizer, here's your main course. 
Okay. Um, so again. There's a there's one option that we didn't we didn't have because we sat inside. We didn't care where we sat, I guess, or did we ask for inside? Well, the um, party this size. We yeah. Have to we, away, yeah. yeah. So, but they have a whole outside seating area, and while we were eating, the Sensational Parade came right down the street, right next to it. If you're sitting in that outside eating area, your kids can run to the rail and see the whole Sensational Parade, and you don't have to worry about losing them or anything. There's a bathroom just to the outside of the gate. There's a little gate exit where you can go in and out to the bathroom. Easy as pie. Yeah, but still. Um, there's definitely some features, some beneficial features if you're eating at the, around the time of the parades. Um, you know, you've got reservation capabilities here. So. Okay. So, final thoughts. What is it? Nostalgia and comfort. Scale of one to ten. I give it a good at least six to seven. Uh, I'd give it. I'd give it a six point five. Um, I love the fried pickles. Uh, I thought they were really good. I've eaten a lot of fried pickles, and they're they're up there on the list for that. Um, my entree, though, was very bleh, very boring. I mean, I think in general uh, the menu is kind of bleh and boring, and um, I'd like to see them at least offer a few more things that are a little bit more exciting. Um, but with that being said. Appetizers are really good, entree kind of not, not so much, and desserts basic. Uh, but service was great. Uh, like she was just saying, the atmosphere is pretty good. You have a, if, you, if you're sitting outside, I wasn't even thinking about that, but you'd have a great view of the parade. So um, all in all, I'd give, I'd give it about a 6.5. Mary Jo? I'm going to give it, my meal was a definite 8. I would say because it was delicious with everything, but on the whole for the families, I'd also give it a probably six to six, between six and seven also. It's it's a run of the mill type of restaurant, and I think the big um, advantage to this restaurant is to make reservations so you don't have to wait in line to eat. And I think that's one of the good things about eating here at Carnation Cafe. Other than that, if you're looking for a dining experience, this is not the place to come for that. Yeah, this is um, this is diner food, and, and it's diner food that seems to be okay with being mediocre. So, uh, based on that, I would give it a five. But uh, due to the fact that the service was really, really good, I'll bump it up to a six, six and a half. Um, but you know, it's not that I wouldn't eat here again. It's just oh, that's what's available, um, type of thing. That is. I, there was nothing about this that would compel me to want to come back here again. And that's unfortunate because this park, this resort does so well with creating dishes and items that do compel you to come back. So I don't know why this got overlooked. Yeah, California is well known for our local produce that we use and, and the, the local food is just, we have such a large variety and it's really good quality here and Disneyland definitely has that in some of the other restaurants, but again, this one's just a regular, it's just convenient, I think that's the draw for it, yeah. So. I was going to say, this, this restaurant hasn't been updated in about the last six years, like five to six years or seven. I mean, when they brought the fried pickles in the very first time, that's the last time it's been updated. So maybe it'll be time to revisit them again in another, you know, within a year or so and see if anything's changed. Maybe they can up their game. All right. Well, that will do it for this week's episode of the Disney Dining Show. We hope you enjoyed it, and we will see you again next week. Thanks for watching.